Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is October 11th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, right now, there's a misperception, in my opinion, in the heavyweight division. Right now, understand, I personally am biased toward heavyweights. I believe there are two groups in boxing, the heavyweight champ and everyone else. Right now, I believe most people are split in the camps on who the real heavyweight champ is, who the people's champion is, right? I personally believe that the best heavyweight on the planet is Tyson Fury. But there are those who believe the best heavyweight on the planet is Anthony Joshua, right? Then you have another group. We'll call them the Bomb Squad. They believe that their man, Deontay Wilder, came into his fight against Tyson Fury with an undisclosed injury, a bicep injury. And of course, that Tyson's gloves may have been tampered with, that Wilder may have picked the wrong uniform to enter the ring with a uniform wearing, uh, weighing up to 40 pounds. The one thing that seems to be a constant as I talk with fans of the heavyweight division, is that most of us, you and me, believe that the best heavyweight is one of three guys, Fury, Joshua, or Wilder. We'll call them the big three. Now, I personally believe that the biggest threat to Tyson Fury is not Wilder or Joshua. I believe the biggest threat is Alexander Usyk, right? Understand, Usyk's a guy who has been bulletproof to this point. Olympic gold medalist. He wins the Muhammad Ali trophy at cruiserweight, right? He's not unified, folks. He's undisputed. Figure out the difference at cruiserweight. Now he's in the heavyweight division, and, of course, he's been in the ring with heavyweights in amateur events, right? We'll call it pseudo-amateur events. For example, he's been in the ring with Joe Joyce. He's been in the ring with one of the guys I'm about to discuss right now, Junior Fa. I have that video in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Now, I'm just telling you that styles make fights, that there are fighters outside of the big three who could challenge the big three, who might be able to beat any of the big three on a given night, right? Let's remember, boxing is a one-time only event. A better fighter could lose to a lesser fighter if that better fighter has an off night or the lesser fighter has an inspired night. Well, here, you have one of the best fights any division in boxing could put together. It's two guys who are major threats to the throne, we'll call it, in the heavyweight division. Let's talk about it, because understand, these guys have been in the ring with some of the big three. And according to reports, they've held their own. Now, Junior Fa is one of the main sparring partners for Deontay Wilder. Let's get behind the curtain here. Understand that Junior Fa, although he's 6'5", and although you have heard me use the phrase big and clunky in talking about Joshua and Wilder, Junior Fa at 6'5 is not big and clunky. He's big, but he's fluid. Now, what makes his fight with Joseph Parker 
former heavyweight champ. I believe he's the first guy to go the distance with Anthony Joshua. By the way, that fight's a missed opportunity. The person who messed up that fight for Joseph Parker wasn't Anthony Joshua. It was the relatively unknown referee who curiously would not allow Parker to fight inside. By the way, that's who Parker is. He's fighting Anthony Joshua, who up until that point was bulletproof. And his idea on how to beat Joshua was to go inside. The referee stops him. So he spends the fight outside, does not get dropped. In other words, Vladimir Klitschko hits the ground against Anthony Joshua. Joseph Parker does not, fights in Joshua's backyard. Now, understand, Junior Fa and Joseph Parker are fighting for something much bigger than the World Heavyweight Championship. They're fighting for King of New Zealand. These guys are the baddest men in the heavyweight division coming out of New Zealand. And I'll just say this. I know fans like me praise world champions. But boxing has a local element to it. You remember Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank, right? They were fighting for supremacy in the United Kingdom. The fans showed up. Hell, forget the rest of the world. Whoever won that fight was going to be able to walk down the street and say, look, I'm the best in this division in the United Kingdom. I'll give you another example, again, out of the UK. David Hay and Derek Chisora had bad blood. You remember that. Hey, it didn't matter who had the belt. You understood those guys needed to fight each other. There was a beef. You understood that the winner after that fight was going to be out in public and the press was not going to be able to ask that guy about the threat posed by his rival. So this, <laughs> this is a rivalry fight. That's what this is, right? These two guys, I'm guessing, you know, while both want the world title, Joseph Parker again, this is plan A, right? This is the fight that matters. These guys live in New Zealand. They want to be able to go to the pub and not be asked about some rival in town. They want to establish their supremacy of their kingdom. So understand, a lot of the math goes out the window on this fight. This is, in a sense, Ali Fraser, right? Yeah. In that fight, world title was involved. No question about it, right? Biggest series of fights, arguably, in recent heavyweight history. But you also understood that Ali and Fraser knew each other. Ali and Fraser had been friends for years. Both guys had won the Olympic gold medal. Both guys were prowling through the same part of the sport, right? You understood when they fought there was a personal element. Folks, Junior Fa and Joseph Parker has, have fought four times as amateurs. Four times. Fa has won two. Joseph Parker has won two. Understand, both are much better than advertised. Junior Fa is currently unbeaten. Not only has he sparred extensively with Deontay Wilder, understand Junior Faw currently holds the WBO Oriental Interim Heavyweight Championship. In interviews, Junior Faw drops the pretense. He just flat out says, I'm a much better fighter than Joseph Parker. Right? This is even though Parker beat him twice. Let me just say this, too. In terms of style, this is a combination puncher. Yes, it's 6'5", with hand speed, who's very comfortable trading shots in the pocket, right? He's not trying to stay outside the pocket and throw a big right hand. That's not his game. 
He actually wants to trade with you in the pocket. He moves extremely well. He's very well coordinated. He has a lethal left hook to the body. 6'5 guy who, when he has an opportunity, will take that step deeper into the pocket to deliver that left hook. Now, let's just say this. I like Parker in the fight. Right now, I don't say this lightly. Parker, to me, is one of the most talented heavyweights out there. It's cost me. Understand, as the Dylan White crowd knows, I picked Parker in that fight. As the Anthony Joshua crowd knows, I had Parker as part of my hedge in that fight. Quite frankly, I view Parker as more talented than Dylan White and Anthony Joshua. Right? So Parker, you know, let me say this too. Parker fought Andy Ruiz. Now, unlike Joshua, he beat Andy Ruiz. But let's just say you saw the problem with Parker in that Andy Ruiz fight. Andy, by the way, goes to Parker's backyard for that fight. Andy, to this day, believes he won that fight. One thing is clear, whatever side of the aisle you're on, is that Andy Ruiz wins the early rounds. In other words, Parker is a bit too lackadaisical with the pacing of fights. Think about how that Dylan White fight ends. Parker decides he has to step on the gas in the 12th round. That's how late it is, folks. So he drops Dylan White. Dylan White gets up and holds on to Parker like someone would hold on to their favorite girlfriend. Right, Dylan White barely survives that fight. As you're looking at that fight, you're thinking to yourself, why didn't Parker step on the gas in the 10th round of that fight? Understand, officially, Parker's knocked down twice in that fight. When you look at the film, you realize he's only knocked down once legitimately in that fight. The other, he's hit by a forearm. But in Parker fights, there seems to be a lack of urgency. He's one of the best athletes in the sport. He can fight going forward or backing up, as he does against Andy Ruiz, right? Parker does win most of the later rounds in that fight, but it takes him several rounds to get started, several. And you notice, too, Parker's a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more conversant, trading shots in the pocket than Anthony Joshua. So the secret to beating Parker is to not wake up the bear, right? You're fighting him. If you're winning the rounds, if you're eking out the rounds, hey, don't step on the gas. You don't want this guy awake. Or you might end up with a round like the 12th round of the Dylan White fight. Parker just lacks urgency. I get the feeling that Parker is that guy who's immensely talented but who is comfortable giving a good performance. Now, that's different than a lot of fighters we know who need to win, right? I'm not sure if Parker has the hunger other guys have, right? Tyson Fury, quite frankly, needs to win, right? If he's bleeding against Otto Wallen, He'll forget about dancing. He'll come inside. If he's losing against Steve Cunningham, he'll come inside. There's an urgency. It's all about now. You rarely see that in Parker fights. But I believe the blueprint on how to beat Junior Fa, and I know Parker's lost to him twice, can be found, ironically, in the... World Series of Boxing film of Junior Fa against Alexander Usyk, right? Understand, Usyk is like Terrence Crawford. They're like the New England Patriots. Usyk is different in every fight. So Usyk's fighting Junior Fa and he realizes 
if I let this bigger man set up shop in the pocket and then pick his moments to jump in with hooks, I'm going to have problems. But if I force Junior Farr onto his back foot, force a 6'5 guy onto his back foot, if I'm the stalker and he's the stalked, his game falls apart. So Usyk, in that fight, is on his front foot. Right? This, by the way, is the Usyk who shows up in the middle of the Tony Bellew fight. Right? Early in the fight, Usyk's kind of feeling out the lay of the land. Then Usyk decides to come inside on Tony, who stopped David Hay twice, by the way, at heavyweight. Usyk decides to come inside on Tony. Well, here, he comes inside on Junior Fa. And again, that film is in the comment section, excuse me, in my favorites folder on YouTube. Junior Far Alexander Usyk. Usyk starts crashing the pocket. You'll notice as Junior Far has to fight backing up, his game falls apart. By the way, fighting backing up is one of the things that made Ali the great fighter that he was. Very few can do it. Let's name another great heavyweight. Junior Fa at 6'5 overwhelms guys with his height, hand speed, athleticism. But Junior Fa isn't good at leaning back. In other words, his his center of gravity is such that he's upright or leaning forward. He isn't good at leaning back like a Vitaly Klitschko. So understand, when you move in on Klitschko, Klitschko could stand his ground, lean back, have you miss, and still punish you. Also, Klitschko could block shots on his forearms. So Klitschko, as you came forward, could lean back, hard to find his head, block shots, start countering you in the pocket. Right? Vinley Klitschko, to me, is one of the best heavyweights of the last 40 years. Well, Junior Fa, by contrast, has to move backward. Now, Joseph Parker who lacks intensity, who wants to be the second or third guy telling stories at the pub, not the main guy, right? He doesn't want to be the movie director. But understand, when Joseph Parker's back is up against the wall, Joseph Parker can actually show urgency. In my opinion, if Joseph Parker fights the fight that he fought against Yui Fury, that's the blueprint fight here. Right? You saw how Usyk fought Junior Fa. Joseph Parker can more than duplicate that. Against Yui Fury, against a guy with excellent footwork. Joseph Parker's on the hunt. You notice that Parker, who's a little bit shorter than Junior Fa, can get even lower. He can fight low. You notice that Parker can lead with power shots. You notice that Parker, who is just kind of hanging out, you don't even realize he's an athlete until you see him move under pressure. You realize that if Parker can move for 12 rounds, like he did against Yui Fury, I believe Parker can crash the pocket on Junior Fa and beat him. I like Joseph Parker in this fight. It's a dangerous fight, right? As I've said, the guys have fought four times. This is that fight that's uncomfortable because the guys know each other. There's no learning curve. Worse yet, it's personal, right? These guys like to see their name in the paper in New Zealand. Not the other guy's name. These guys, I'm sure, are tired of being asked about 
you know, other heavyweights. Let's say Junior Fa is giving an interview and someone's asking him about five-year heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. And he's talking about Wilder and stuff like that because he sparred again extensively with Wilder. And then there's going to be some reporter there from New Zealand who's going to say, what about Joseph Parker? Understand, these guys are tired of hearing about the other fighter. Right? A guy like Joseph Parker, who has a high variance, who was behind in his fight against Anthony Joshua and did not push it, who was behind in his fight against Dylan White and did not push it until the last round. Right? A guy like that in a who's the baddest man in our country fight, which is what this is. I believe is going to be inspired. Understand, he's fighting for the heavyweight title against Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz comes out, is winning the early rounds. There's no urgency with Joseph Parker, even though Ruiz today has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Right? The light didn't go on. There was no, what? This guy's in my backyard. He's walking me down. That's what Andy Ruiz tried to do to him, by the way. He's walking me down in my backyard. This is my shot at the heavyweight title. Right? There was no urgency. I believe there's going to be urgency in this fight. Because the man he's fighting has already beaten him twice in the amateurs. I'm expecting Junior Farr to be too upright for a low fighting Joseph Parker, right? Both guys have legitimately been down in fights. Dylan White does drop. Joseph Parker once legitimately in their fight, right? Dominique Gwynn drops Junior Farr, who gets up and looks as spent as Anthony Joshua looked when he got off the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko. Both of these guys have been dropped, both of these guys believe they're the baddest man in New Zealand. I just believe that Parker can fight better backing up than Junior Fa. I believe that Parker can get low, force Fa onto his back foot, where I believe Junior Fa is vulnerable. I like Joseph Parker in this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I understand. In this big fight in New Zealand, as you could imagine, there's Team Fa, there's Team Parker. Tell us which team you're on. Tell us how you see the fight going in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by. I like Parker. Thanks for stopping by.